How's it going everybody? Ben from Bunch of Pokemon here and welcome to another mail day. And um, this time around I have a very special mail day because in this FedEx package right here are my cards that I ordered from Card Hobby, a Chinese eBay site, which I'm really, really excited about. But before we do open this, I do want to get rid of this big package because I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure there's only a single card in here. I don't know why they would use such a big package for just one card. But I guess better safe than sorry, you know, making sure that everything reaches someone or the person that you're shipping it to safely. So I do appreciate the, the extra precautions, but it does feel like slightly overkill, though. This big of a package for just one card. And let me see. Oh, I guess there was still a bit of tape left there. Um, I, it was shipped very securely, though. I can't fault him for that. It's just kind of an odd choice, I suppose. Let me just try to get this open. The card should be in a top loader, I'm pretty sure. Most of these are. Yeah, there we go. Oh, it's one of these. It's like a little thingamaduhik. Nice. <laughs> okay, thingamaduhik. That's the exact term. Um, here we have the Empoleon. It's also taped shut for some reason. I'm gonna take it out the sleeve anyways. Take the top loader aside. And then show it off to the camera. Here we have an Empoleon V. One more alternate art. There are a few more in this in this mail day right here. Um, this mail day is actually really, really special. Not just because of the order from Card Hobby, you know, the Chinese eBay site. It's also really, really special because it does include all the um, the alternate arts I've been missing. I think I'm going to save the, the FedEx box for later because that's where most of the cards will be in. Yeah, I finally, with this mail day, I have finally completed my alternate art collection. So that's what I mean by my collection of alternate arts is finally complete. I don't have every single one of them. I do have most of them. Um, I think most notably, probably the um, the Blaziken VMAX from Chilling Rain, which I know a lot of people really, really like. Um, I don't have that one because I don't, I don't really like it that much. And there are a few more here and there. Um, here we have another one that I actually ranked pretty high, I'm pretty sure, in my in my alternate art tier list. The Shadow Rider Kelly Rex, illustrated by Mitsuhiro Arita. I just love everything that's going on in the background. I mean, it's a snowy background, which I absolutely love. I do love snow. And you also have someone looking out the window here. This looks super, super lovely. Super nice. Okay. Um, old school EX cards, you know, from the Ruby and Sapphire era. But well, here we go. I'm just hitting the alternates. I actually don't remember if all of these letters are alternate arts. I think they are. And then the um, the box in there is going to be mostly Chinese cards. But without further ado, here's another banger by Mitsuru Arita of all people again. I mean, his illustrations are super, super nice. Here we have Neuvern V giving me Batman and Gotham City vibes all around. This is an awesome looking card. Man, this looks super, super nice. Add another one, another alternate art down. Just two more in these envelopes. Let's open this one up next and see which card is in here. I've, I've ordered these so long ago that I've mostly forgotten, as per usual, which cards are in what envelope or which cards I ordered in general. Um, like this Inteleon VMix, a card that isn't actually that expensive for an alternate art. I think it's one of the cheaper ones. Um, I think it might still be below 20 euros, 20 dollars, although I'm not quite sure. But this is an awesome looking one. It is from Fusion Strike, a set very notorious for having horrible pull rates. I mean, I myself have only pulled the Sandaconda alternate art. At least I did pull an alternate art, mind you. Um, a lot of people haven't pulled a single one from Fusion Strike, so I can't complain that much. Would have loved to pull this one instead. There we go. Is that open? That is open. Nice. Okay, here is the last alternate art for for this video. It is the Aerodactyl. Very good. That could have been me spelling that one. The Aerodactyl kind of takes away the surprise of me like showing it off. But, you know, what are you gonna do? Alright, it's also taped to the cardboard itself. 
See, this is what I like about ship. This, this is perfectly fine. You know, a top loader and then some cardboard. This is usually how I ship my my uh, more valuable cards. If it's if it's like below a certain point, I usually just use a top loader. But it's like a very very high value card, like this one, for example, isn't very high value. Still, to me, it is somewhat expensive. So this is what I would do or use um, to ship my cards as well. A bit of cardboard and a top loader and then probably bubble wrap or a bubble mailer this is the aerodactyl this is kind of or this was kind of infamous for a while here this was really really infamous for a while here um i still remember that pokey ref like didn't manage to pull this one bit and then the price kind of shot up because everybody thought it was super super rare um i think it's come down a little bit but not to the point where it was before the poker ref situation no blame to him though no blame to him so i can safely cut the box open um, this was actually i did wait for for a little bit here for these you know until they were shipped or i think the longest i waited uh, wasn't even the shipping within china because you have to ship them first to to the warehouse of card hobby and that didn't take that long like usually people would ship it within like two or three days and then it would only take two or three days more um for actually or to actually reach the card hobby headquarter if you will um so that wasn't too long no the longest part it took was after after it reaches card hobby they have to check the cards so they upload it on their platform that is a okay I don't know if I can show that label or not. Might have to blur that in editing. The longest time it, it took was for, for Card Hobby to check the cards and to put them into their warehouse. And then after them, after that, it was completely fine. Um, I did, didn't say when every single card arrived, they should ship them. Let me see which way around. Okay. Okay, so I guess we have to do it like this since there are labels on the back of these. So no big surprises here. Um, as I've said, like the longest time it took was for them to check them. And then after they shipped them, in fact, with FedEx, you know, FedEx is usually really, really fast. It only took like about um, three days from, from China to go all the way to Germany. But FedEx is usually really, really fast. Um, here is not a Chinese card. This is a Japanese card. But I did get it for, for pretty cheap. Most of these cards, actually all of these cards, were really, really affordable, believe it or not. Um, this is the Janine from I've Forgotten the Set. It is from the Sun and Moon era, though. And this one, or Jasmine, not Janine. That's that's her German name, Jasmine. Um, 15 euros is what I paid for this card. So that is really, really cheap. And the condition is pretty good. There is a scratch down here. Or maybe it's just a smudge. No, that looks like a scratch. Um, that's completely fine, though. I'll still probably try to grade this. Um, we'll see what it comes back as. But this is a pretty cool card. Um, here we have the first Chinese card of this opening. Here we have the Karen. Let me take this one out. Very securely shipped. Though so that is very, very nice. Let me take it out of the top loader. There we go. <laughs> the card coming up next. But first we have to we have to check the Karen right here. Yo, look at that shine. Look at that shimmer. That looks really, really nice. Man, okay. And the condition is Yeah, that's even better than the than the Jasmine. Look at this. This is like at first at first it looks completely flawless. Maybe a few scratches here or something. But other than that, it looks really, really clean. Really clean, Karen. Um, for this one, I paid 7 euros. 7 euros for this car. Can you believe that? That's absolutely insane. That is so cheap. Um, here we have, of course, the Friends in Alola. You know, an other, another version. I did have so many. You can actually see the date where I probably ordered this. Um, of the seller's on-card hobby, which was 26th of March, so that's like a while ago. Um, luckily, they finally reached me. I think this is my label, so I have to get rid of that. Another copy. I do have the CGC Normal 10, 
of this card already. I do have two more copies, one going to PSA and one going to BGS. I still don't know when, though. Hopefully I can get it out without damaging it. Doesn't want to leave. This might be the original sleeve that the card came with from the, from the collection. But here we are. That was a really tight sleeve, so I'm not going to be using that. But here we are. You've seen this card so many times on my channel. Now I've bought so many copies of this card already. And yeah, that looks really, really clean. That looks super clean. Maybe this will finally get a CGC Pristine 10. Although centering isn't perfect, maybe it'll, it'll scoot by. But we'll see. We'll see. For now, I'll just put you over here. And then this Rayquaza. This is the last of the of the raw cards. Everything other than that is a graded card. As you can see with the Pikachu right here. Um, here is the Rayquaza. The Rayquaza V alternate art, you know, from the... Actually, from the new set, Nine Colors Gathering. Or Evolving Skies, however you want to call it. Finally being able to see this card with the Japanese texturing. I do know that the card is in Chinese, but for those unaware, um, the Chinese cards, the simplified Chinese cards, do use the Japanese texturing. So this is what a Japanese copy would look like as well. Really, really awesome card. This might actually be one of my absolute favorite alternate arts. I think I ranked it really, really high. Might have been an S tier. I can definitely see why. I absolutely love this card. I do have the English version of this one in my binder somewhere. Um, but this one, this one will go to grading, by the way. Just like so many others of, of these raw cards sitting here. Other than, than the English alternate arts, those will go into my binder. Okay, here we have our first graded card, and you can already see the lily sneaking up right there. Unfortunately, I can't hide them because all of these have my label at the back right here, so this is my my label. Don't know why they shipped the label um, with the card as well, but here we are. Um, this is a Chinese slab. I didn't really buy it for the grade or anything. Um, the only reason I bought this card is to crack it out of the case and put it in my binder. Because the Rainbow Pikachu, um, since, as I've stated previously, this has the Japanese texture and you can kind of see the stars in the background there. There is so much more going on in terms of texturing with these cards <laughs> as compared to their English counter variants. It's only a 9, but it's also by a grading company that I personally wouldn't trust. I don't know how reliable they are, so... I'll just crack it out of the case and then put it in my binder. Um, maybe I should move these off screen. Or like kind of off screen. That's That way it would be a surprise. So there we go. Here we have Lily's full force in a PSA 10. And yes, you can also buy PSA 10 cards. Um, I have one CGC graded card in this, in this unboxing right here. Which is actually upcoming next. But yeah, you can actually buy PSA graded cards off that platform as well. The Lily, Lily's Full Force. And that actually completes my Lily collection of, of like, um, Chinese cards. Because I now have this one. I already have the, the quote-unquote normal Lily, you know, the one from Ultra Prison, just in, in Chinese, with the ridiculously cool texture. And I also, hang on. So I did recently get this back from my CGC return. Still really happy that I got this one in a pristine 10. And now having this one and also have the previous one, you know, as I mentioned, from Ultra Prison, or whatever the Japanese equivalent was called. I now have all the Lily cards that I ever want. Um, I know there's one more where she's like wearing a hat or something. I'm not going to buy that. Don't really care about this or that one. Um, this is way more than enough. This is way more than enough. One thing I wanted to check, though, with these Chinese PSA cards, um, if they're actually real... So one thing you can do with PSA cards, um, of course you have this, this logo right here, um, you have this, this silver hollow foil, if you flip it over, it like shows PSA, you also have the PSA blue right here. Same right here, if you flip it over it says PSA. Um, no, you can also take a black light. Cause if you see that right there, it shows, when I take the black light away, it's, it's kind of hard to see, but now you can see it also up here. You can also see there is PSA and white, and usually, if the if the card is fake or the label is fake, that ink right here would be like yellow or greenish, kind of like these old. I don't know if you ever had like these um, old glow in the dark stars or whatever, um, that kind of color, like that that green shine. 
Um, I can also test this with a normal PSA stuff. So this is one that I graded myself, of course. And if I shine that light, it's the exact same white ink, just like that lily. And I think, I think that makes it very clear that this is real. Not that I had any, any suspicions, because the the sellers I bought these from had all really, really a ton of good reviews. So no one would risk their like account over like one fake card for like 133 euros, right? Okay. Um, coming up next is this one right here. This is the only CGC card I bought from, from Card Hobby. But it is a Marnie. And this is a Marnie that I've actually wanted to buy for a really long time. The Japanese version is really, really expensive. But, you know, as per usual, the Chinese version is so much cheaper. And this one I paid, if I can find it. This one I paid 80 euros for. Which I think is a decent price. I think the raw card was in the ballpark of like 50 euros. I don't know. So this is actually from a gift box, as you can see right here. You know, there are a ton of gift boxes over in China for like different Pokemon and characters. There's like one with Lily, who has like that Lily card feature that I already have in ACGC 10. But there's also like a Charizard one and so on and so forth like china products pokemon or chinese pokemon products are actually really really cool um if you are interested at all i highly recommend you check some of them out they're super amazing usually really really fun to open and this one i paid 80 euros for which i think is a decent price i think um i was debating on buying the box i think the box itself is like 80 already or like 60 but then with shipping, it would be more expensive, so I just bought the car, because that's realistically the only reason why you would buy the gift box, right? For for the promo card. Um, two cards left. One more full art trainer with the Misty's Favor. Here we have a Misty's Favor in a PSA 10. With the Chinese or Japanese texture. You can also see the hearts. Do you see that? Yeah, I, see, I think you can see that on camera. The hearts look like they're moving. Really, really cool. Definitely much cooler texture than compared to the flat of the of the English version. So let me just do the same test as I did with the with the other one, and see. Yep, that that looks good. That looks completely fine. That looks completely fine. Really, really cool card. Um, and I paid for this one 80 euros. So also really, really affordable for a PSA 10, mind you. Like, try to find a Japanese version of this card. I'll wait, like, or an, an affordable version of this one in Japanese. It, it would, this is a really, really expensive card in Japanese, as are many of these full art trainers, because, uh, of course. Hmm. Anyways, here is the last card. Actually, let me try to make this one a secret. So let me just take the label out or the card. There we go, and then we'll turn it around, because this one is really, really special. This is the most expensive card um, in this mail day. Um, I paid 180 euros for this card, but this is incredibly special. Let me just flip it over. Here we are. The Latias and Latios GX Tag Team card, already graded in a PSA 10. Would you look at that beauty? Man, that card looks super cool. Dude, I'm pretty sure 180, you, you wouldn't even get a heavily played or poor version of this card in English for that price. And this one is already graded in a PSA 10. That's insane. I'll definitely buy more Chinese cards in the future. It's insane how cheap these cards are. Really, really awesome platform. And let me just do um, the test as I did with the other ones. There we go. Yep, the ink, the ink is white and everything should be good. As I've said, I did buy most of these or all of these from reputable sellers. So wasn't really an issue there. But man, what an insane mail day. Let me just try to, to show everything off if I can. Don't know if I have enough space. Okay, we have to put the Misty over here kind of awkwardly because my key light is, is shining on the card, as you can see right here. Horrible reflections. But this is what I ended up with in this mail day. Really, really awesome stuff. A lot of, lot of cool cards. And I'm really, really happy how this turned out. And also, 
how easy it actually was to buy these cards off of Card Hobby. It was actually super, super interesting and super easy to do it. It's like basically, well, it is like eBay. It's just eBay where the sellers are mostly situated in China. That's it. Shipping is also very, very smoothly. As I said, the only thing that does take a bit longer is um, after the cards have been delivered to their um, to the Card Hobby HQ, so to say, it does take quite a bit of time until the um, the employees have the time to check the cards and then put them into your um, your warehouse, so to say. But that's really it. Everything else went really, really smoothly, and I'm really happy how this turned out. But anyways, I guess it does it for this video. If you enjoyed this one, then give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, then give it a thumbs down. Tell me in the comments below what you didn't like, so I can try to fix that for future videos. Other than that, right here is the video that YouTube thinks is best suited for you. Right here is the subscribe button. Click this one first, then click this one. Check out any of the other videos in the description below. And I hope we'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Peace, peace. Take care.